lecture we will consider a subclass of uh, um, all the topological spaces and these uh, particular topological spaces will have certain properties we will consider and uh, we will discuss uh, um, at the end of the lecture algebra is used to study the category top of topological spaces by means of functors i've not defined functor what the functor is in this course yet but um, intuitively is a way of going from one category to another category we will see then explicit examples in the next lectures but at this point just uh, try to uh, imagine what it could be from the context of the sentences so by means of functors that go from topological uh, category of topological spaces to some algebraic category where alg is some category whose objects are sets endowed by algebraic structures typically alg may be the category of groups or modules over some ring the most no notable among such functors are denoted by pi n where n is a non-negative integer and uh, these functors are called the homotopy groups for instance pi naught of x is the set of pathwise connected components of x thus in this case the category alg uh, will be just a category of sets with no structure uh, on it and you notice that a functor in this case is something that associates to each topological space uh, some other object of another category so in this case the other category is the category of sets and the functor pi naught associates to topological space x this set pi naught of x that is the set of uh, pathwise connected component of x pi 1 of x will depend also uh, by another point in x so uh, pi 1 takes two arguments one is the topological space x another one is a point in x which we'll call x naught uh, will not be just a set but it will have a, it will be a set with a group structure on so alg in this case will be groups and pi n of x x naught for n greater or equal than 2 is an abelian group therefore it is a subcategory of the category of groups and uh, in this case alg will be abelian groups or z modules is exactly the same thing in this course we will just consider pi naught and pi one from pi two onwards well these groups will not be discussed in this course and are typically the subjects of a, a more advanced course in algebraic topology all these functors from the category of topological spaces to algebra are homotopy invariant what does it mean being homotopy invariant well it means that if we take an homotopy equivalence between two objects two topological spaces in top and we apply a functor of this kind we will be getting a, a map between uh, the image of the domain applied uh, to which we apply the functor f and um, the image of the codomain to which we apply f so homotopy equivalences will be going to morphisms inside uh, alg this is the, cate the category alg well being homotopy invariant means that homotopy equivalences will go to isomorphisms inside alg the converse does not hold in general i.e if we apply to a morphism to a map h the functor f and this f of h happens to be an isomorphism in the category alg we cannot conclude in general that h is a homotopy equivalence in top 
this somehow measures how much uh, the functor f is uh, uh, not seeing of the category top we have seen that the category top is much more complicated usually than the category alg and we try to simplify it by means of functors from top to alg and all the information that we are missing we are losing by applying the functor f is somehow, somehow contained in this behavior so anything that is not homotopy equivalent in uh, in top that becomes an isomorphism in alg after applying f is information in top that we are losing by applying the functor f however it is extremely important to investigate as to why this is the case if it is because of some silly purposely made topological space in top which is purposely made to uh, explicit some exception to some rule or it is because the functors do not capture interesting structures of topological spaces in this context it is necessary to add conditions to generic topological spaces the right subcategory of top to work with is extremely complicated to describe and it has been the object of deep research for many years and it is still ongoing as far as I know in this course we will consider the first ap approximation of such a category which still provides plenty of interesting examples to work and to play with and let's now define the conditions uh, the, the topological spaces we will be mostly interested in this course a CW complex is a topological space X constructed as follows step 1 we take a bunch of discrete set of points X naught we will uh, denote the union of this discrete set of points with this strange notation there is an X and that as a subs subscript there is a, a zero in parentheses. This, this is because this uh, set will be the zero dimensional skeleton of X. The space X we will uh, construct in the following steps. So take a bunch of a discrete set of points and then step two by induction we do this procedure. So let's for, for example take X1 x1 is made starting from x0 and then taking a disjoint union of unit disks of dimension 1 in this case and we will be indexing them by alpha be careful that alpha ranges in an index set which does not need to be finite can be countable we may use here a countably infinite number of disks to perform this construction and then we take the disjoint union with the x naught and we mod out by an equivalence relation now we have to describe what the equivalence relation does on the set here on the numerator so for each alpha there exists a map which we call phi alpha going from each boundary of the disks which in this case is Sn minus 1, but in our particular case, since we are considering x1, it is the boundary of D1, and the boundary of D1 is S0, it is the zero dimensional sphere, so it is the union of two points. In general, it will be Sn minus 1, the n minus 1 dimensional sphere, going to the n minus 1 skeleton, in this case is x0. So we are taking the boundary of the interval, which is two points, and we are mapping these two points to the zero dimensional skeletons, the discrete set of points that we fixed in the previous step. And in a sense, we glue, we glue through this map, these disks. So the equivalence relation is defined by taking P in the sphere and making it equivalent to its image through this phi alpha map in the uh, in the n minus one dimensional skeleton.
Okay, in this case, x not the skeleton. The last step involves taking the union of all these x i's for i that is a, a non-negative integer. Therefore, the index set i might be infinite. And we have to topologize this set. So if i is if, if the index set i is finite, we give this set the quotient topology coming from the equivalence relation that we have seen before. The numerator is the disjoint union of these disks, and the the image of the quotient map is uh, is the set of equivalence classes by the equivalence relation that we described. So the codomain has a natural quotient topology coming from uh, the equivalence relation. If it is infinite, if i is infinite, then we will uh, endo x uh, by the so-called weak topology, which is defined by uh, describing the, the, the open sets in x, or even the closed sets in x. u in x is open, respectively closed, if uh, capital Phi of alpha minus 1 is open respectively closed for each alpha where capital Phi of alpha is the map that goes from the n-dimensional disk of index alpha projects down to the xn this was one of the connected components of the numerator defining xn okay so the, pro the projection is the projection on the quotient given by the equivalence relation. So we are restricting capital Phi alpha to the whole disk, taking the image in the quotient and then embedding it in X. So this big Phi of alpha is the image of the n-dimension, an n-dimensional disk inside X. Before considering a few examples, let's introduce this notation, otherwise it is complicated to talk about CW complexes. If we take the image of capital Phi alpha of the interior of the disk, instead of the old disk, just the, the interior and dimensional disk, we get a, a subset of X, which normally is denoted by EN alpha and it is called an n cell of x n stands for the dimension of this cell which is dictated by the dimension of the disk of which i'm taking the image e not alpha however is just a point and it is called a zero cell if i'm looking at the the first step of the construction of a CW complex, you remember, I take a bunch of uh, uh, points, a discrete set of points, and each of them is called E naught of alpha, and it is uh, considered to be a zero-dimensional cell. Uh, it, it cannot be included in, the, in this definition, so we have to assume that the, the definition in the first line stands for n greater or equal than 1, because if we take the interior part of the zero-dimensional disk um, is going to be the empty set whatever the zero-dimensional disk is and uh, the empty set is not going to be a zero cell so for, for the case of zero cells so E naught of alpha we have to take the points of the zero skeleton phi alpha phi alpha you remember it was the map going from the boundary of the n alpha to the n minus one skeleton of uh, the, the CW complex, phi alpha is called the attaching map or characteristic map of the cell E n alpha. X n is the n skeleton of X, as I anticipated already in my in my speech. We end the lecture by uh, stating this definition. A subcomplex A of a CW complex X is a union of cells of X 
so that the closure of any of such a cell belongs to A itself. A subcomplex A of X is a sub CW complex in its own right. So A, uh, if it is a subcomplex, it is a CW complex whose structure is induced by the CW complex structure of X. As we will see, we can very often we can give to X uh, uh, more than one CW complex structure, and um, in order for A to be a subcomplex of X, A not only has to be a subtopological space of X. But so A must have a CW structure, and its CW structure must come from the one of X. Now, we have given in, in this uh, lecture just abstract definitions, and in the next, next lecture we will see examples, explicit examples, of CW complexes, because at this point it is really hard to figure out how to construct explicitly a CW complex.